it's another week, another day, and this is Hope Channel Kenya. And the program is Syria Ushindi. My name is Catherine. I'm so happy that you're watching us. And we thank you for choosing Hope Channel Kenya. I can imagine what life would be like sometimes when we talk about family. Many times when we talk about family, we mean husband, wife, and children. But it doesn't happen all the time and in all families. There are families that for one reason or the other, they just find themselves incomplete, so to say, as people may say. And Gladys, my friend here, is one of those. Remember, we started talking about widowhood and how God has been gracious to certain ladies that have come to the studio here to share and how the Lord has seen them through very difficult experiences. And one of those today is our sister Gladys, who has come all the way from Mombasa. Gladys, how are you? I'm very fine. <laughs> you are very welcome to Hope yes, Channel Kenya. thank you. How long have you been watching Hope Channel Kenya? For a long time, since it started. Mm. Yeah. What attracted you to Hope Channel Kenya? So many programs, but the most touching one is uh, is the one that which talks about counseling people. Okay. Yes, I love the the that program mm -hmm. because it has inspired me in, uh, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you, as much as possible, you want to be home and watch that particular program. Yeah. It's exactly. called Hedge Express. Yes. Now, Gladys, tell me a bit about your childhood. Where did you grow up? Mm, I grew up in a family uh, that was a polygamous family. Mm -hmm. My father had four wives. Wives. Wow. Yes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> yes. So your mom was which number? Third number. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you have lots of siblings. Yes, the first born in the first house of my dad is the age of my mom. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up with a brother who can pass for an uncle. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Actually, we don't know each other. We had oh. so many. Oh. Yeah. We don't know each other. Well, what brings us together when somebody has died, mm the gathering mm. is when we can be told, do you know this somebody? This is our cousin, this is so and so, this is Gladys from Coast. <laughs> yes. It's a big family. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but mm. was it a Christian family? Did you grow up? Yeah. No. Okay. They were not. Only in our house mm -hmm. was a Christian family. Mm -hmm. Only in our house that was a seventh day mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. But due to the challenges which my mom got, mm. Now where she was married now, uh, she was married now at our father's place. Mm. It made it made her to walk back from the seventh day to another religion. Mm -hmm. She she always tells us that, that when she got married at her early stage, mm. she lost eight children. Oh. Yes. Mm. So now that one made her to walk back mm. to a different religion. Mm -hmm. Then, because of the problems she was seeing now and then, now the children that she got after that, that she distributed them. <laughs> now Mia was brought up in one of the, the, the my mother's sister. Oh, so my aunt's place. So you didn't stay with your mom? No. She no. was really trying to protect you so you don't mm. die like the mm. others. Mm. Is that where you became an Adventist? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And your other siblings, are they Adventists? No. They are not. In fact, from my family, it's only me alone who is an Adventist. Yes. Do you find it a challenge that way? Yes, especially when we 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 go home oh. and we like now we want to go to church. Yeah. Some people are going to the shamba. Maybe you planned after church you will go and get to the gathering. You share, you share a lot, but you don't see people. Mm. The time you are leaving, maybe it's on Sunday. It's now when they go to church. their fellowship. Mm. Now it's a task in our family. Mm. Yes. 
That must be quite something. So Gladys, tell me, so you grew up in your auntie's place and finally you got Mr. Wright. Tell me a bit, how did you meet this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you meet? I grew at my auntie's place. I, in fact, I was, I was taken to my auntie's place when I was eight years old. Oh, you were young. Yes, because I remember the picture. It's still like it happened yesterday. <laughs> my aunt, she was a teacher by profession. Uh -huh. So when, my, when I was taken there by my other sister, when after my aunt received us, she asked me, do you want to go to school? I want to see by the, the show of the aunt. Uh -huh. So I was putting my... <laughs> That's how they checked if you are old enough. That was my school. aunt, and mm -hmm. she was a, a, a teacher by profession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I took my hand as I was being instructed. Yes. Now it didn't reach the, the ear. The ear. So mm -hmm. she told me, no. But I kept quiet. You know, it was the first day. Mm -hmm. I have not known my aunt, how mm -hmm. she reacts. Mm -hmm. And then the second question, she asked me, do you, how, do you know how to bathe? Then I said, no. Mm -hmm. It's my, my sister uh, that has brought me is the one who always births you. Then she told me, now you are a young baby, I need to take care of you. Actually, I was uh, almost the, the age of the first born in that family of my auntie's mm -hmm. kid. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we were almost the same age. <sighs> now when the time came to go to school in our place, I finished like two years, then I joined uh, mm -hmm. primary. Mm -hmm. By that time there was no nursery, nini, nini. Yes. You were straight going, there was, an, there was no KG, nini, nini, this of late which, which are there. Mm. So I went to nursery, from nursery I went to class one and proceeded. Mm -hmm. When they, they shifted to Kisumu, I also shifted with them. Mm -hmm. I finished my Class 8, I was called to Kisumu Girls. I went to Kisumu Girls. I remember very well. My dad, with the old age, when I was called to Kisumu Girls, my aunt told me, Now it will force you, you go back to your home, you tell your father to sell the cows and the woods, and then he'll know how, uh, how, how parents pay for their children who are learning. Remember, mm. my mom is sickly. Mm. So I said, fine. So when I went home, my father was like, he was at a old age, he was thinking I'm from working. Oh, so he didn't know that you're you are, you are in school? No. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. I'm, I told him, no. Me, I'm, I've passed, I've done well, I'm going to secondary. He didn't understand. Mm. So, my, my other brothers organized, they sold some few cows and goats, then they escorted me now to my auntie's place. My aunt added some money, then I was taken to school. Mm -hmm. Then after the duration of four years, remember I was staying with my aunt. Mm. I was not given time, even when we go to church, she never used to give us time. After church you can share with the some youth members, no, no. She was the type, if you've gone to church, after finishing the church, you go back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I finished Form 4, I went home. That was my first time since I joined Form 1. Mm -hmm. I went home. And remember, I had been taken when I was eight years. Mm -hmm. I only went to ask for school, school okay. fees. Now four years down on the line, I had not again gone back. Okay. Gone back. It was uh, my church, that's Motagara SDA church. Mm. It was like a camp center. So I used to sing, I was a good singer, I, I, I was so talented. So I, that Sabbath I went to church, I presented a song, I sang. Now after singing we finished, people were going home. That's how I met my man. Oh, yes. That first day you went. The to first day, <laughs> the way I was singing, me as we as we as soon as we finished church, I just went home. It was just a walking distance. 
And I had people calling from behind. Mm -hmm. Remember me, I've never stayed at home. I yeah. was not used to it. Eh? Yeah. Nobody knew me at our place, even now. Mm -hmm. No. People came to know me when my husband died. Mm -hmm. So he, he called me from signs from behind. Then I looked behind. It was a group of four people. Both of them, they were in a suit, in a black suit. Mm -hmm. I stood, I greeted them. And then we introduced to one another. Mm -hmm. And then we talked. Kawambia sasa hapa, mimisiwezi kurudi nyuma. Because I left home saying I was going to church. Mm -hmm. I have to go back ho home. home. So I went home. They, they escorted me up to our place. And I told him, that's my home, but don't make a mistake to follow me. Mm -hmm. I had that fear. No. You had not. You, you had no exposure. That is it. Mm -hmm. It was my first time. I've stayed with my my aunt who was very tough mm. because of poverty from our place. Mm. Now she wanted me to work hard, get employment, and then is when I open another chapter. Mm. If there is a chapter mm. <laughs> of marriage. Mm. Now that one was in my mind. I hata mandugu sangu wasijui kama nilikuwa na ha. Mm -hmm. Nahawa, it was a fear in me. Lucky enough, they went back. But remember, they had seen our, ho yeah. our home. So me, I went. Chakula ilikuwa tayari nikakula. Then I, I called a Sabbath. The following morning, we were, we, we, we were at the shamba. Me and my mom we were doing some, some kupariria. Mm -hmm. I saw people. My sister, my younger sister came, came running. Gladys, I'm seeing people. Wanapanda kuja. We call it recall. Mm. <laughs> we pass it to your home. And I think these people are coming maybe to see you. Do you know them? So I was like, Kisahani. <laughs> I'm with my mom now. You I don't want my mom to hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I ran very fast mm -hmm. to shut her and to see who that was. I was so shocked. A group of seven. Remember yesterday they, they were, were four. four. Now, now they are seven. seven. In a black suit and in their ties. Mm -hmm. I ran to my, you know, in our home. So from one house to a, our father built it houses together 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 so if, if you when you, you are in our compound you see another aunties my house. step yeah. yes so i ran and jumped to the other your step mom's place my mind was not now working now i'm like hey, hey, hey what am i going to tell my mom and then what am i going to tell my brothers I had that fear. I didn't have knowledge. How can I knew you had just been in a relationship? Yes. So when they came, what did you do? I jumped to my auntie's place. That's my stepmother. Mm -hmm. And later on, they came. They were given seats. They sat. Mm -hmm. They introduced themselves. Mm -hmm. Remember me? I went to hide. Mm -hmm. They said <laughs> we were at the church. And we got a friend, and we, we've just come to know her place. And now we are asking whether she's around so that she can come. She can come and we identify her. Maybe we, in a, we are in a wrong place. In a wrong place. So my sister was sent. The one, the one who saw me chumping, yes. to call me. I was in a race. You can, you can imagine when you are within home, Yes. how you look like. Yes. So I was called, then they said, yes, this, this, is, is, the, one. this is the one. Mm -hmm. My mom was like, hey, I make it. <laughs> <laughs> How fast have you known people? <laughs> you came recently. Mm -hmm. And imagine that's the time I'd finished my fourth form. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for exam. For results to come out. So they came, food was prepared, they ate. And then my mom said, okay, 
Your fist has, there is no way I was to chase them away. Uh, my home is open for everybody. So next time you feel like coming, even, even if Gladys won't be around, just come. Just, just come. come. So it was my turn to escort my visitors. It was almost getting late. Mm -hmm. It was around because my brothers came, they talked. Mm -hmm. My other stepbrothers came. Mm -hmm. People came until they were, they were told there's no more seats. Now you can sit on the, on the floor. Wow, that was a quick relationship. Remember, that was the first time they have come to our home. Mm -hmm. And uh, this lady has not been staying around. Mm -hmm. It was a shocking news. So I was like, hey, hey, hey. When they go, what will my brother say? I had that fear. Mm -hmm. By that time, when we, they were eating and finishing everything, it was around six. Mm -hmm. They said, eh? Gladys asked us to push us a bit, then she'll come back. We escorted, we escorted, we escorted, till I went. That's how I got married. <laughs> <laughs> That's yes. very interesting. So they came for the first day. That very first day you got a husband. I mean, they saw you in church. And they came on Sunday, and you got married. That's the thing. Wow. Yes. Wasn't that very interesting? How did you find it? Oh, to Were me. Were you shocked? Very much. To me, when I went, when we reached, you know, from their place to our place is a walking distance. But me being no, staying no. far, you didn't know. I didn't know how long it was. Mm. So you found yourself in Yes, this when we were going, it was getting darker and darker. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm alone in Scotty. My, my younger sister never followed me. Mm -hmm. I was told, we are alone so that you can, you can be released early. Mm -hmm. There is no need for you to go to people. Two people. Uh, mm -hmm. So me, I followed what my mom say, mm -hmm. said. So we went. So when we reached halfway, that's what I can imagine. I told now my my better. Now, Baba, I think it's getting late. Because yes, Juan, wapi naelekea. no. Don't you worry. Just escort us. Don't you worry. We have money. We can even hire. I uh, a pick up, then it will bring you back to convince me. Me, I went, I went, I went until we reached a shopping center. I was shocked he called me. He, he came with four brothers and the three cousins. Hmm, but you didn't know they were his relatives. I didn't know. I spotted him. Yesterday, on Sabbath, when they came, yes. I spotted the cousins who were three cousins. Mm -hmm. He came minus the brothers. Mm. They sp I spotted the three cousins and uh, him, because they were four mm. on Sabbath when we met. Mm. So, when we reached the buying center, it was almost Sambili, Usiku. Mm -hmm. So he called me. Kanyambia, I want us to go to, the, to this camp. There are some things I want to purchase for you. So I was like, which things? You know, I went with the, I went with the slippers. Mm. I was wearing slippers. Mm. Then I was wearing a skirt that I was from the shamba. Mm. <laughs> it, uh, it, it was somehow torn. Wow, that's a nice man. He married you with, so uh, <laughs> in, in the real you. He didn't need a beautiful... So when I when we reached it in that shop, he, he told me, you know, I want you to buy some some clothes. Yeah, some few things that will enable you wherever we'll go that you'll feel comfortable. So he went and picked some clothes. Yeah. Now it, it's when my mind came back to normal. Then I said, yes. Now I've been married. <laughs> so where did he take you? We went to their home. From there, it's like a walking distance of 10 minutes, uh -huh. you've arrived. Uh -huh. Their place. 
so we arrived. We arrived uh, in, the, this, in, in, in their small house, house of boys. Mm. Yeah, I told him, Miss Yendi Koju. He told, he, he showed me this is my, my parents' house, his houses. It was dark, but you I could it. see. So I told him, Miss Yendi, Sai Usiku, Siendi, maybe Kesho. Told me, don't worry. The brothers told him, Mama, you are going nowhere. They went, they prepared supper, the boys brought supper, him remained with me. Now when the morning came, he told me, you are going nowhere. He stayed for, with me three days, then he came back to Mombasa. Oh, so he had come from Mombasa? Yeah. So he left you in his home? And a new wife now? A new wife. And then you joined him in Mombasa. So how was life like in Mombasa when you finally joined him? In Kisi, I stayed for one full year, mm -hmm. and then I had ups and downs. Mm. My aunt, realizing I've been married premature, she came for me. Mm -hmm. She came for me, she was given a direction. My brothers came for me. My two brothers mm -hmm. came for me and my sister. And then later on, my aunt came, now the one whom I was staying with her in Kisumu. Mm. She came, she quarreled. She said, this lady, I wanted her to go for a cause mm. after seeing the salt. She's a premature woman. She can't make it to be a, a woman, wife. Mm. a wife. She quarreled in that family, my father-in-law, my mother. And she, and she talked. But I was like, eh, now I should go home. Mm -hmm. My father said, no. The one who brought here is not here to be given all those informations that you are leaving. Till he comes is when he can authorize. And that time, kulikuwa na simu ya jami. Mm. I didn't have idea. You know, I was married at 18 years old. Mm. You were young. Sina ID. Mm. So if, 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 if there is something, hakuna vila yani. So we, we, kama nataka kuongea nae mbaka niende kwa simu ya jami where it was far from now our village. place. Mm. And he has to send a message go to our home. Tell him, Mama, I want to talk to Gladys to come such such day so that I'll talk to her. So when Mama goes and being given the message, she comes and says, he's doing well. He said, you don't go anywhere. <laughs> so, so it was miscommunication all the time. So I stayed for three months, then he came. When he came, I didn't even greet him. I just started shedding tears. I told him, no, he just brought me to, to a dumping place. Because the, the, the third, we stayed with him the two days, the third day he left. So my mom was like, huh, I've been brought just a, a, a primary kid. Mm. <laughs> you were very young. She doesn't even know how to dress. Mm. That's my mother-in-law. She never recognized me as her daughter-in-law. Mm. She could embarrass me in front of the, the ladies around. Mm. Come and see the, the, the girl. Mm. So, so when my husband came, after three months, I told him, I'm not going to stay here. No, I'd rather go home. After all, I was a student. Mm. My aunt came here. She said she's going to pay for me. If I go and join in school, I did not see, you know, the child. My brothers went and took my child and then they hid. They said, you wanted to be married, eh? Now marriage will be everything for you. <laughs> but you had passed. <laughs> yeah, I did well. They, they hid the, the certificates. They only came to give me when my, my husband died. It's when I was given the child. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now, Gladys, let's move fast forward. You got married and you had children. You moved to Mombasa. And then something bad happened. The man you had met in a day died in an accident. That would be after the break. So here is Gladys, a woman of God. She loves God. And God has been good to her. She lost her husband in a bad accident 
but she has picked up her broken pieces and she's moving on now join us after the break so that you know how the lord has helped her you need to know her secrets so don't go away again to Hope Channel Kenya. This is Siri Aushindi. We are on the second part of this show. Today our special guest is Sister Gladys Nyakundi. She lives in Mombasa but originally she comes from Kisi. In the first part of the program she told us how she met her husband in an interesting way though. But she he came she went to church once and he saw her sing the following day she was married. The beauty is that she has she lived in a good marriage until the husband died. Gladys, what happened? How do you remember exactly how, like, what your last day was like with your husband? I was on prayers. Hmm. I'd taken a, a week of prayer, so it was my my husband used to do with clearing and forwarding mm -hmm. at the port. Mm -hmm. So there was a vehicle, a Prado, it was to clear and then bring it to the owner to Nairobi. Nairobi. So it was 2012. That mm -hmm. The accident happened in 2012, mm, November mm -hmm. 15th, mm -hmm. on Wednesday, mm -hmm. at, uh, at 5 in the morning, mm. at Makindu. Before that, <coughs> I was on fasting one full week. So the day he was leaving, three days like, then he, he clears the, the vehicle from the port. He asked me, there was some small business we were doing. We had a, a small shop and then we were doing the unga supply. Mm -hmm. Three days for him to travel, mm -hmm. he called me and he asked me, Gladys, what do you see that you will push these kids in your lifetime. He asked me a question. Up to now, I imagine I say that when people are going to die, it's like they hear themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that time I didn't understand. I was like, Daddy, why are you asking such? Then he changed the face. Now he asked with the Ukali. I'm asking you, are you ready to run the shop or the Unga supply? Then I said, the Unga supply. Then he, he, he said, then that one is what will take your children through. Mm. Those, are, those are his words before the accident. Now it happened uh, Wednesday morning. He left on a Tuesday. On Tuesday night, he came from the port. All days when he was clearing a, a vehicle, he could come. I awake watoto watembe watembe alafu warudishe yani watoto sawa wafurahie ukaa kwa gari so that day when he came he came a harsh man said mtu asiguse hiyo gari then he came to the house aka change nguo akaniambia nipikie so i cooked for him nikam tengenesea chakula sima na mayai then he ate then he called me akaniambia me i'm leaving Check where the, the documents of this plot is, put it safe. So I was like, you know there are some things which belongs to men. Mm. So I told him, go and check where those papers are. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When somebody is going on a safari, you mm. don't need to exchange words. Mm. So I followed the, what he said followed the condition. So I went and I told him, after seeing the papers, yes, I've seen the papers, they are at the right place. Sikokwa sweets, kesiya kondan, kasema sawa. Then after eating now, he called the children, wambia mimi inaenda, rakini intarudi. He sat like now, I'm seated. Akatoka kaenda, then he came back, he called me. And I'm, I feel I should talk something, but I'm not free. He stood three eyes. 
Then now the last minute the student went. What he told me, it's me who should call you because I'll be on the road. It's me to call you. All the days when daddy was traveling, I used to call. Mefika mm. wapi? Pungusa, pungusa the speed of the car because I knew how he's he, fast. Right? Yeah, he's very fast. Pungusa. So that time, that day, he gave a warning. That day, he came kali kushinda siku zote. Mm. So na mimi nikasema, mtu anaposafiri, you don't exchange, you give him humble time. You mm. do what he wants. So we what he said, ebu njo niombe yale maombi yako. So I came I was he a Christian? Yeah, he was a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a Christian. We were baptized. Amen. We were baptized. So he was a member of Kizingo Church. So uh, we prayed and he went. Cautioning, don't make a call. Mm -hmm. So Ika Akaenda. Me I slept at a room where I called sitting room. I didn't go to my room. I slept at sitting room. Hata sikulala. Ni ile unangalia sana sangapi. Hata nipigia. Chua litoka. Alitoka kwa nyumba saine. Usiku. So I was, I'm like, he has not called me. Because he could call me. Mefika maali. Mefika changamwe. I'm taking a break. Sasa nimefika hapa. He could update me as he is going on. Mm -hmm. He didn't call me. So around four in the morning, I didn't sleep that day, that night. Around four in the morning, I used to fuga mbuzi. Nilikuwa na mbuzi. I used to have a kuna mtu alikuwa na sifungia. That man was outside in the Toka hiyo inje saa kumi. Nikasikia kama ni baridi. I used to have a, a toilet outside mm. that time. So nikatoka, nikaita huyo mze. Mze uko wapi? Nasikia tu kutoka inje, yani nirimualati security wise. Mm. Because in saa kumi nagiza hiko. Nikawasha tasa inje na nikatoka. Nirialisha, nikawalisha. When your mind is sick, that's the time my husband was in four of the accident. accident. So I called that mze. Kaunda mze. Tumbo ina nikata, lakini si tumbo ya kawaida. Ule mze vile nilimuambia hivo. He just left that sa iyo usiku. He sensed. Hmm. When my husband left, alimuita kamambia, uchunge isi mbusi na usisumbue mama. So he called Na sasa akaringanisha na atujajua chochote. So that's the, the time my husband died. My brother-in-law who stays in Nairobi called me sakumi na mbili in the morning. He asked me whether I've talked to my husband mm. on his way, when he was on his way. Nikamambia sijaongea na heye. Let me try. Simu ni mte? Mtecha. So I called my friend, a lady. In Mombasa. I told her, I'm trying to call my husband. In my mind, it's like, he's no more. That's what I, is no more. So the, the friend came to my home. When he came, he called now. I gave him then, I gave her the number of my brother-in-law. The brother-in-law told me, told, he, told her, we are at Makindu. We are assessing the body. And now, this, uh, yani, you know, it was head-on collision. Mm. He was was into parts. Mm. The steering pierced. His yeah, the, uh, even the heart, everything, even the head. So what the my my brother-in-law told the uh, her, mm. we've been we don't know how we can explain to Gladys, but we thank God she has called you to come in our home. So when we, well now, this lady was a good friend of my husband very much. She started crying. And then I said, yes, now this is why my stomach was complaining. I didn't accept. I said, no. How can David die? 
How can God allow those things to happen? I'm a young woman, a man who uh, stayed for 16 years in marriage. I mm. have not known so many things. You mm. know, my husband was like my teacher. Vidu vingi nilikuwa sijui. When he comes home, he's home. Naniambia, enda hivi, fanya hivi. If you don't want to, my mom to be annoyed, do this. He could safeguard me in all ways. When we are at his home, oh. he makes any, he could make any, everything to look simpler. So I was like, where am I? I have young kids. I'm also a young woman. So How old I, was your, your oldest child? My child at that time was, now he's, now he's, uh, it's seven years down on the line. Mm. Now he's, now my, now my son, the first born is 20, 21 years old. Mm. So he was 16, he was around 13. Uh, he was very young. Uh, because he was in class six. Mm. My second born now who has gone in form one was in class two. Mm -hmm. My daughter, by that time, he was a baby girl, a baby in the house. Hmm. That the, when the dad comes, wakes her up. Then he alikuwa na kutesa, and he comes with chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only daughter in the house. Hmm. My daughter didn't know anything, so I accepted, and I said, God, it's your will. The way you've accepted, also take us now to move on. I thank the Lord. The far we've come, although. It's not an easy way when accident like that happens. So I could ask myself, I had three to God, you could have left him. Maybe I see him sickling for a long time. So yes. I, I stay with him in the hospital for a long duration. Then he passed. Yani I could ask so many, several questions. questions. I was yeah. like, my mom now, she's at her old age. My dad died at her old age. You know, questions, when you, you are there, your kids are young, you are young, but we thank God, they far we've come. We've seen the hand of God. But Gladys, after you buried him, I mean, how, how did you get back to your bedroom and start life? Was it easy? It was not all that is fast when we went to bury him. The body was brought to Lee. He stayed at Lee for two weeks because he had some brothers who were at US, so they were to wait for him. They said he cannot be buried before they come, so they had to wait for, for him. Mm -hmm. So we went home. It was not all that easy. Mm -hmm. It was not all that easy, especially you sleep with your coffin mm -hmm. in the room. You think maybe he can smile. You know, you don't believe. My my boy who was at, uh, by that time was in a boarding at Stiokimau SFS. This boy was affected. Even now, he asks me, Mama, you never told it told me in time, the day my dad got an accident. You only came for me during the burial. That thing it really hurts him up to now. Mm. How did my dad, how, how did it happen that you, you were putting it in a, you never wanted to open it for any Ilimuma because he came from his school one week and then he died. Alikuwa metoka kum visit. He left his shoes, akampa vieto kamambia, nimekuachia my shoes and you have another pair, put it on. I think he knew was leaving because when I shared that thing to my father-in-law, he was like, Ali Muachia Boma. Mm. That's how it is in Kisi. Mm. Mm. Because Ali Mpavia to Zakaka, Akava. Gladys, early on in our discussion, you mentioned that uh, there was a time you really, really went down and even attempted suicide as, you know, like you really didn't see why you should leave. How did you come out of that? What particularly led you to think like you want to end your life? Being a widow is a challenge. Being a widow, there are some people you cannot face and talk to them, even your church members. Mm. You don't have that freedom, as in when you, can, you, you are with your spouse, you can talk to... You don't have that freedom. Mm. 
So a widow is a challenge. If you don't know God, you can get lost. Mm -hmm. It reached a point, I, I, I got some challenge, I lost some money. Mm -hmm. In that process, I have kids who have to eat. I have some loans I have to pay. Mm -hmm. I have some APCD, all those things are looking at you. It reached a point, I could not even move from my compound. In fact, one month, mm. I could not move. You have kids, they want to eat. You alone, you want to eat. You have business, but you cannot facilitate the business. The man has gone haywire. There is no whom you can run to. It's only you look up and see God. So when I was outside with my boy, my boy realized, Mommy, it's not okay. So my boy used to be with me. Nikitoka tu inje hivi, aye yuko na mimi. Actually I was almost committing suicide. Let me be open. Mm. Yes. Then I was outside. Then the, there is a program they, they were watching. They tuned up channel. And then they, my son called me, the younger son called me, Mama, that is a nice program here. Because who on a pender program, so our Adventist and Joe won. So I came, I found a program that was talking about counseling. There was a lady who was a top channel, she was being counseled by one of the, the counselors. Then this lady gave her history, she was a widow. The lady is a widow. She came from South Yansak. Mm -hmm. I think South Nyasa Conference. She was giving a history on how she's gone through her challenges and the way she's seen God. Mm. On how she has educated her children. When the husband died, Aliyacha Watoto Wadogo Kabisa. So when I listened and compared to my case, I said, I think I'm doing something that is so bad. I'm leaving my children and nobody will take care of them as a mother. I was inspired when this lady talked a lot how the Lord has brought her, the mm. father the Lord has brought her. Then I said, if God can do for such woman, such, the, 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 that task, what of me? Me, I have business, I'm not sick, I have children, huh? Then, I was so much inspired. I took the number. I didn't call by that time. I took time to call. When I called, we shared with the counselor. Now we, we developed friendship. Mm. I thank God so much. We've talked so many things concerning the life, the life of widows. He has inspired me biblically. He has made me strong. Uh, as I am here, uh, I've seen the hand of God, that's what I can say. And the Lord has done a lot mm. through our home church. Mm. I come from Kizingo Church, through our home church. Now it's when I came to share with people, I was me alone. Now after talking to the counselor, I learned when you share with somebody something, but you don't open that much, you know, we fear. You share somebody and you hear your story somewhere. Mm. So I shared a bit and then. These people, the home church came for my rescue. They assisted me. I thank the church, I thank the single people, I thank the members. And what I can say, I saw the hand of God. So what would have happened if your son had not called you to watch Hope Channel, okay? According to me. In fact, I never wanted to sit near them. Nilimuambia mimi natakuenda bahari. Na hakuna mtu asinifuata. That was what was in my mind. Na hakuna siku ile wameona mama ameenda baharini hata kuogelea. Hmm. I've stayed in Mombasa this is my 20th year in Mombasa. I've never gone to swim. I don't know how to swim. The man who used to take me to Bahari tunakaa hivi ya na ogelea na watoto is my husband. Hmm. From that time I've never gone to Bahari. So it, I said mi sasa nitaenda nichirushe hapo. Now the children will be taken with good Samaritan because me, Penya, and Mefika, and Mefika, Misho. But I thank God, the least life 
beyond death. Amen. Yes. I've learned a lot through Hope Channel. It has brought my life back to normal. And I can stand thanking God. And I can stand giving a testimony mm -hmm. to those who have not seen the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, as we come to the end of the program, Gladys, there is someone really struggling. A person that is where you were at the time you wanted to go and throw yourself in the Indian Ocean. They don't see any reason to live. They really have no hope. What can you tell them? There is hope. There is hope. When we, when we look, when we read the book of Psalms, Psalms uh, 125, it says, those who trust in the Lord, I like Mount Zion, mm. but I'll surround, the, the way the mountain is surrounded, Jerusalem, the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, that's how God surrounds us. Mm. The small problem we see, it's that, the, let it not put, put us in a way that we, we forget the good things that God has been doing for us. Mm. Let us focus on the ahead and God will do us great things. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, my friend, oh, well, I, if I was to write a book, I would start, I don't know with which story, because I see the Lord's goodness in many people's lives, including yours, but I really want to thank God for my sister Gladys, that uh, God has raised her from the ashes from contemplating suicide and leaving her children to good Samaritans to now getting into God's word and finding that God surrounds his children as Mount Zion surrounds Jerusalem. And that's my prayer for you. I pray that you may pray for Gladys. The children are growing. They need help. If you want to speak to Gladys and support her through prayer, if you want to hear father how the lord has been good to her please get in touch with hope channel okay we want to thank you very much that you could take time to be with us continue watching the rest of our programs by the way they will bless you and so until next week i just want to wish you god's blessings and look forward to having you again on our show meanwhile if you have a testimony that you'd like to share please feel free you can see a number on the screen call that number or text and say you have something you want to share, and you're very welcome. God bless you.